we can rise against the burden of justice. We can hear that. So, of course, the elder needs a lot of effort to make this threat whole again before saying, I'll fix the bucket. You'll feel me. This is not going to work. Your son's son. Can you get a kid? Pretty, pretty, please. Pretty, please. And Samuel is certain to do. After all God has done for the people, they are in the promised land. It's the thing. It's the one thing. And now they want a thing? And I find God, and it's kind of what Samuel is so endearing about us, but I think it's not easy if you all are me. Don't take it personally. And while we can have our scruples with God for how we perceive that corporate or individual relationship, we can't say that we don't have a God to answer those things. Prayer is not a simple thing. And when we say and we believe that we serve a God that answers those answers prayers, it's not a wonder for us. It shouldn't be a wonder for us. And if you want a king to rule over you, just so you can be like everyone else, go for it. Answered prayers have consequences. And God makes that very clear, not just to the Israelites, but hopefully to us too. Answered prayers come with a deep and overwhelming responsibility. Samuel and God lays out that very clearly. Having a king is going to mean something. People, people will have to pay a price. They will pay for their freedom. They'll pay with their customs. They'll pay by giving up their food. They must pay. They get a person. Despite them being set apart and working to deepen their relationship with a God who has given them everything that they need, a God who has fulfilled God's promise, they see what their neighbors have. They see the other things. They forget who their God is in a classic human fashion and they want to be just like everyone else. Army, pastors, especially handsome and well spoken rulers, just like everyone else. You know a little bit, maybe, about how Jesus felt about this extreme human desire to be just like everyone else. You get a little bit of sassy Jesus, which I don't love, but it's the Jesus that we have. And he can never answer the people's questions. Is a story or a parable or something like that? Or do you find a and a yes to that? But what is come up with that? So we have Kathy Jesus, and he's been off doing ministry. He's been healing those who ask to be healed, and even those who don't ask for healing, as Pastor Lee reminded us last week. The unclean spirits are falling out. And Jesus is just simply doing all of this extremely tiring son of God's death. He's been on the road and he's trying to come home. But they won't let him. There's too many people around because they want to get a glimpse of who this Jesus fellow might be about. Their curiosity has gotten the better of them. In a way that has made them, has made things a little bit unsafe. He just can't move around freely. He can't even get a bite to eat. What good is that type of curiosity? The reaction that he's been in for his ministry is that he's lost his mind. 
so much fun to have to get a hold of him as his literally the church where she's from the Jesus. He's taken himself outside of himself. He's very tangibly lost to her humanity. And then you have this pride, and they say, well, he's the only one for the devil. Everyone ascribes what they see to the least curious answer, an easy answer. But Jesus has a question for them. Who are my mother and my siblings? How did you respond to that question? As he flows through the most time, I can't help but be reminded by the resiliency of queerness to thrive and flourish despite all of the ways that our lack of curiosity has dealt people who God has told us are our siblings. So many of us understand family so simply as the fear that they related to us. Nothing more, nothing less. But we live in a world, we have a world that pushes us to disregard that kind of thing when it doesn't serve us anymore. We put people that we think are our family to the side because they're different. In queer culture, there's this notion of chosen family, people that stand in for you when those who are blood related to you cannot belong. People that you choose to build a life with because doing life alone is impossible. We have really powerful and beautiful examples in an answer to the question Who is my mother? Who is my sibling? Sheila. I, by the virtue of who my friends are and where I live and work and play, get to experience very clear and children family that lives together and travels together and works together. We mourn, we rejoice at the experiences of this life. Not in spite of, but luckily in addition to many, many people who are also related to. They, my chosen family takes me to drive stores after my bedtime, and I ask them to help me talk to boys. We really live in a house that is full of love and life, and everyone wins, and sometimes we even get to have fun along the way. This side, as we move through a summer of gold and solidarity work and learning, I invite you to carry that question with you. Who are your people? Why are they your people? What does being with them mean to you? How has God put you together? As we learn through liberation, through the lives and experiences of Latin Americans and women and black people and black women and queer people, as we add some tools to our sibling toolbox, as it were, I'm excited to discover and rediscover how we can answer the question and the questions that Jesus poses to us in some of these annoying parables. We want to be like everyone else. We want things to rule us and everyone to be a fair life in We want limited disruptions to our everyday lives, but all of the luxuries that life can have. We want everything. We want to move. We have things. We have governments who don't serve us, and we are paying for it. We are paying for it through the health of our planet. We pay for it by literally taking money out of school to finance the lives in the pockets of the rich. We pay for it with people sleeping on the street. We pay for it with drones that surveil our college campuses and our cultural parades. We pay for it by never learning or experiencing meaning in relationships. We pay for it by never repenting for the ways that we closed our doors and turned away those who God has already called us are our siblings. We are 
We serve a God who answers all of our prayers. What are we saying today? Today, I'm praying for the curiosity of little grandparents and babies. You don't practice that kind of curiosity as much as you should. Learning is hard. Being together is hard. We know that. But we have to ask for God's help because we know that we serve a God who does listen to us. Knowing the implications of our prayers every step of the way. We have to be careful what we pray for if we're lucky to make this way.